Hello viewers, my name is Adam. And I'm Aaron. And this is Sticky Media Productions, bringing you a TV review. Okay, so I'm just going to say right now, James Gunn's ability to take obscure comic book lore and turn it into something incredible and watchable is outstanding and impressive. The <laughs> Peacemakers is what we're discussing in this video and it was truly a surprise but true i mean that's an <laughs> understatement let's be honest uh i did not have like the, the fullest faith of this particular show actually doing as well as it as it did and making me enjoy it as much as i have uh i've after watching, you know, the uh, the Suicide Squad, his um, you know, retake on uh, the Suicide Squad movie, uh, I'm just impressed. Yeah, and this is uh, this is pretty much a like a follow up to that film. Mm -hmm. And um, some before we get to, like nitty gritty, like the story characters and all that, um, like quick reminder that this is technically the first DC extended universe. Uh, spin-off television series. Yeah. Um, it's connected to the films of the timeline with Man of Steel, Birds of Prey, so Justice weird. League, depending on which, well, I don't know which version of Justice League they're going with. Yeah, I mean, that's, and, you know, that's but, flip a coin, actually, at this point. Yeah, but uh, it, it's in the, that, it's universe. Mm-hmm. And so far, um, at least creative-wise, I'm not sure about the official business side and how successful it is ratings. Yeah, they really got to get on that. I kind of want to figure out how well this show actually truly did. But Yeah, yeah. it was really true. But clearly enough, um, at the time of this review, uh, they announced a season two. So clearly something's doing right. True. Um, and if any of you still want to watch this, um, this is only on HBO Max. So please, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and watch it if i mean if you are i mean what are you waiting for this show is worth it yeah so uh, why do we go like like liking this series so much um the story like mm. again um is a follow a direct follow-up to the events that happen in the suicide squad some of the events that are, are mentioned and also rep reference heavily mm -hmm. is um is actually addressed in the series, but for the most part, it is uh, mainly focused on the character that spun off of that film, Peacemaker, played by John Cena. He had yeah. no business <laughs> making that pro work as much as he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I mean, I thought he was going to literally be a throwaway you know, character, like he was literally going to be cannon fodder, and nobody really had to care about it at, at, at that point. Yeah, but, but no, like when we discuss in our review, like mm -hmm. he was a straight up. Villain he that. was, and it was a surprisingly effective one as that mm -hmm. film. So it's like, yeah, I can get more of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in the story of this series, it deconstructs his character. Yeah, you really um, get to, to that. Directions that you you'll be very surprised about, uh, and of course, uh, like a few of them yeah. actually are attributed to John Cena himself. Actually, attributing that for that character uh, surprises if you want to watch that show. Mm -hmm. And what we do again is a, a small scale scope story, um, taking a, like like taking us to a similar vein of how the CW shows um, handle their DC shows, where it's like a group of characters who mm -hmm. have to come up. Uh, who uh, who aids the lead title character, and uh, what follows is a you know, like a deconstructive story, mm -hmm. uh, filled with a lot of humor that has so like, much with, of humor that we want to be really honest here um, is very hit and miss. It, well, hit and miss, or really hits only a specific target audience. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're either going to like the jokes or you're not. Um, it's very low brow mm. <laughs> humor if you like that. A low hanging. A low ha yeah. <laughs> Some more ways than one. And, and, and like, like usually that that jockish type um, a college. Um, I would say locker humor. room talk. Yeah. yeah. And so if you're in down with that type of humor, that's, that's laid it throughout. Honestly, is you know guns you know bread and butter. That's mm -hmm. like where he works from. That's what he usually puts in. So honestly, if you're a fan of guns work. You aren't going to have an issue with this um, with this um, particular series, but we there were some genuine huge laughs that we did. Oh well, yeah, have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a quick, like, it's a very breezy series of eight episodes. Oh, that's yeah, it's a smooth watch. Mm -hmm. I could have literally, if honestly, had this had come out all at once, I could have binged it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, like it, you'll be surprised at how thorough it does with 
of, from a lot of the characters that we're able to see. I gotta say, hands down, probably one of my favorite characters to come from this show and creeps me right the heck out would be Vigilante Adrian Chase. Mm -hmm. uh, what Freddie Stormer did with Stromer. Yeah, Stromer, I'm sorry. What he did with that, with, with his performance in this one, I was like, okay. Yeah, uh, he like, the character of Vigilante is one of those obscure characters that James Gunn, like, is clearly, that's what he wants to work with. Mm -hmm. Rather, he's watching work with DC or Marvel. You know, plucking out the characters that are highly unknown to the mainstream public and want to give new breath of fresh air to them. Honestly, I think the only other time that the character of Vigilante was used was on the CW when it was with the Arrowverse. Uh -huh. So, uh, th and this is a completely different portrayal of how this uh, that character is. So this, if you was trying, if you saw that show and you saw how Vigilante worked in that, if you didn't like that performance, this is a totally fresher one. Uh -huh. And like, I'm, I'm with it. Yes, and uh, when we were discussing the small group that Peacemaker is essentially working with in this show, mm -hmm. it's like their own uh, like super super low budget, yeah. wait, wait, uh, <laughs> like Oscar uh, government on uh, site that Amanda I call Wallace. them the C group version of the Suicide Squad. Oh, oh. Like D yeah, yeah, D, yeah, yeah, you're right. yeah. Basically, if you fail because like because of the events of the Suicide Squad. Um, the character, two of the characters that were um, introduced in the that film mm -hmm. are also followed up and explored in this series. And it um, works out for them. Yeah, you know, one of the main, uh, those two being Jennifer Holland's character of Emily, uh, Amelia Harcourt. So she's so cool. Mm hmm Is she <laughs> <laughs> that strong will character who uh, character who is very uh, who's trying to stay focused uh, with her job, but her. Her very um, clearly meant up, uh, anger issues gets in the way of a lot, <laughs> but there's a lot of reasoning for that, especially um, where we spoil the characters. And I, you know what? It, because this is, uh, this is getting a season two, I really do want them to go even harder on her as a, 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 a character piece uh -huh. because there are so many layers that are interesting to try and peel back and try to get to the very heart as to who she truly is. So yeah, I'm game for more from her. And um, Steve McGee's character, uh, <laughs> Steve, uh, uh, cool. John, another another way of how James Gunn will, uh, he sets this character up um, um, in this show. Like he's also he's another uh, carryover from the Suicide Squad, but mm -hmm. he the, you'll be surprised with uh, a, like a recurring gag with the character <laughs> that develops into a, something that's very yeah it, um, it starts yeah it, it starts out as a joke, but then you really once you pull it back and you actually see where it's originating from, mm -hmm. it, it, it makes it more heartfelt. So you know, like I said, this it, this is literally playing by Gunn's numbers. He mm -hmm. truly knows how to you know. You know, get you to laugh, but also make you feel something too. Mm -hmm. uh, other notable characters before we get straight to the production side of things. Danielle Brooks is a um, this is the first uh, thing that I saw her in, and she plays uh, who uh, plays Amanda Waller's daughter uh, by the name of Ed Bio. Mm -hmm. A secret to the characters of the show, but will uh, like, for those it's immediately shown in throughout in the episode one. Mm -hmm. So not much of a mystery or slight minor spoiler there. But her character is very unique in, in superhero films or content in general. Because at once she's also, she's almost played like a second lead to the show. Itself. So much, like, like it's bizarre. There's so much stuff and nuance to her as a character in, in, in this particular portrayal that, you know, it's probably best that we probably don't go co completely fully into what has, what, what goes on with her as the show progresses. So, but, like I said, you might want to just go ahead and just check it out for yourselves. But trust me, you will be in for a treat. And also, uh, another character not to mention, um, the actor who plays Moore. Uh, <laughs> surprise! It's not, it's like his, his is a very spoilerific role, so I'm not yeah. really much, but he's good as well. But um, one of the villains that I would like to say uh, that should give a shout out is August Smith, <laughs> the White Dragon. Okay. That's uh... <laughs> again DC. Uh, James Gunn is taking very obscure DC comics, and this is a character who apparently is canon in DC Comics. It, I said, where you get these people from? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this character explores a very real world 
issue that is oh is very prevalent still to this day. Which is really going to be interesting to see if the other studio can properly start pulling that since they're going to be ha they're going to end up having to address these issues going forward considering the direction certain of their heroes are going. Mm -hmm. But you know, and it's not the second time that DC Comics and HBO tackled that type of this. They're type not of strangers to it. Um, especially when they did with um, Watchmen mm -hmm. the sequel series. So, the way this show was able to handle sensitive subject matter, well, albeit sometimes it does sometimes go a little bit too far, yeah. in ter depending on who your taste wise is, it's very, it, sometimes it does come to some very compelling stuff as it is very rooted in character. So, it's not just the shock and awe uh, uh, purpose of it, it's also. Um, read, uh, like very interwoven in the writing. It's smut and gore, but with a purpose. And with that said, one like if anything that should um, that we would like to like really hook this show to is how surprised the production is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that one blew me away. I did not know that it was going to put that much effort into the visuals and the st and cinematography and the choreography into the show as much as they did. Yes, I, uh, like literally, I was like trying to figure out. I was like, so this is where the rest of that which you had. I don't know. The, like, if this is the leftover of the Suicide Squad budget, I mean, if well, it was this, a leftover this own budget, if, if this so. is own budget, then claps off to you. Mm -hmm. But then again, I could also say clap off to you if this was the leftover so because that's what you made with the leftovers then there's so many shows that went before this that need to get the butts beat for it mm -hmm. because this is how you're supposed to do it yes uh we just we mentioned this uh, the cw as a how the 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 base of the small scale scope and how they were mm -hmm. decided to go about the characters um the, at least the plenty of such things but the show is nothing but this is actually legit like an hbo uh, production with a very really well done vfx the fight choreography is like literally on like it's such like it's on the same type of quality as you saw in the Suicide Squad yep. film. So if this was like shown in theaters, like I'm like I wouldn't have easy. It literally like I, I I would not have kicked myself if I had sat down, bought a ticket, and watched this in the theater. Like really, like one example I'll say um, that's gonna be, it's very prevalent in the show. And it's also done in marketing. What the VFS wise is a sidekick character <laughs> by the name of Eagly, which is a completely CGI bald eagle character. Eagly's the heart. I love him. <laughs> it's something that it was like another carryover that James Gunn is literally um, doing what he was doing in Guardians of the Galaxy is creating these like fully CGI characters with uh, great personality and yep. all that and make them to characters in their own stuff. Right. Put it this way. Things get outrageous, and it sometimes goes to places where you feel as though if anybody else had done it, it would just you it, literally you'd be laughing yourselves out mm -hmm. of the set room. But somehow it he pulls it off here, and you're just like you're just sucked in even further into it. So like I said, James Gunn. But if there's one major thing, despite uh, other than some of the. Um, hit and miss humor mm -hmm. that we do want to address is that because this is the first DCEU um, spinoff television series, there's a lot of reference. They, they decided to like make like mostly audible references to DC Comics lore in general. Now, in, that in and of itself can be okay in you know certain contexts but then when you realize that this is because this is feeding off of an already established you know series of films and you know series in and of itself it becomes more in a case of whether or not are you just show, uh, telling and not showing or are you ever really going to go deep into it but I can't necessarily you know believe they will or necessarily will ha get that chance to because this is just a spin-off series and this Foundation for what the DC, what the DC Cinematic Universe is working with it's at this moment. Very rocky and very complicated. Unstable. Like, like the timelines of certain films do not like, it does not add up with certain events, uh, which things. So you, case in point, we're literally working with a timeline where we have two variations of the, the, same, ju film. Of the same film. Where we're gonna go with this, mm -hmm. I have no way of knowing. So with the show, like literally name dropping a lot, like a lot of DC characters, rather they're obscure or even known or like mainstream, and like we question the the canacity 
of it is, of this series and what those characters are. So, despite all, despite that, what one really major criticism that we have with the show in terms of um, the continuity of it, mm -hmm. uh, it's Peacemaker is still relatively a great series, at least a great start to a, what we hope will continue to be a great series. I'm looking forward to season two. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to be able to top what they started out with this one, but especially with how the, the season one of the wrapped up. Exactly. They you know. wrapped up pretty well, uh, uh, pretty tight. So I, 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 it makes, yeah, I think as though that's probably where they should have had capped it off at. But mm -hmm. if you wanted to bring this back for a second season, I'm not going to say you can't. But I am going to be a little bit more hesitant as to what you're going to actually pull in order to make that season happen. But, you know, fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. um, guys, as always, if you like this, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we want to hear from you. Did you watch Peacemaker? Did you, um, what was your favorite episodes? Talk to us about the characters. Do you plan on seeing, coming back and watching season two? Yes, and also be sure to look at our social media uh, channels on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We have social media reviews there. Mm -hmm. uh, especially from stuff that we don't have the time to magically make full on videos of. And also, please should sure notify for upcoming videos in their own right. And again, my name is Adam. And I'm Aaron. And this has been a Seeking Media Productions. See ya.